Hello, it's Laura Davalo here with another interactive card tutorial that I hope you'll enjoy. In today's card, I turned the little princess from the You Deserve the Royal Treatment set into a wing flapping fairy. I started by stamping her on a piece of printer paper with extreme black hybrid ink. Next, I made a simple mask by cutting out everything that I wanted to transfer when stamping her a second time on Copic friendly paper. In other words, I wanted to get rid of her magic wand. After die cutting her with the matching die, we can simply trim the excess with a pair of scissors. I colored the girl and the little dog from the hot dog set with Copic markers off camera. Next, I cut a 1 inch wide pull tab with a die from the interactive up and down dynamics and after scoring it in the middle and making the fold really crisp by rubbing it with a bone folder, I added a fast drying liquid glue and rubbed it some more to create a narrow but sturdy pull tab. I did some really simple ink blending on a panel cut with the largest die from the stitched rectangle stacks at One Dynamics with Summer Splash and Field Day Premium Dye inks. Now I'm lightly marking the center on both sides so that I can cut a slit for the mechanism. But first let's figure out the exact placement of the wings. They are from the Let's Say I Do Dynamics. After placing them on the panel, we can draw a first set of dots to mark the spots where we will attach the wings to the pull tab. The second set of dots, about a quarter of an inch from the first ones, will be used to link the wings to the panel itself with brads. I'm just going to stack these so that I can punch the linkage holes in both wings at once with my sixteenth of an inch hole punch. And for the inner holes, we'll just use a needle. I'll also use it to poke some holes in the pull tab. OK, here I'm drawing lines for the slits. I think I made them 3 and a quarter inches or 1.9 centimeters wide and I left a 1 inch gap in between them. In hindsight, it would have been easier to assemble the mechanism if I had cut a little rectangular window instead of two slits, but I was afraid that it would be visible behind the fairy when looking at the card from the sides. So grab a thick thread and a needle and poke it through the smaller hole in the right wing, then through the right hole on the pull tab. Then we'll go back to the front through the left hole and through the small hole on the left wing. I tied a surgeon's knot so that it wouldn't open up before tying a second one. Instead of doing one loop, you pass the end of the thread one more time, like I just did there, and that way it doesn't open up. And here goes the second knot. And just in case, I poked the ends through to the back of the pull tab where I tied them with a surgeon's and a double knot again and secured them with a strip of clear tape. I think you could skip this and maybe add a drop of glue to the knot before trimming those threads instead. The tricky part that I alluded to before was to get the pull tab with the wings attached through the slits Luckily, they are quite narrow and you can stack them thanks to the give of the thread. There we go. Once we manage to do that, we can link the wings to the panel with some mini brads. Before punching the holes in the panel, remember to adjust the wings to their starting position. When we pull on the tab, they will move upwards, so put them in an almost horizontal position. I'm using these silver mini brads that you can find in the MFT store, but white ones would be even better. After inserting them and linking the wings to the panel, we of course need to check that they are working properly before moving on. Here I'm making a couple of collars or sleeves of paper so that the pull tab can slide straight. This would be especially important if you do cut a rectangular window instead of slits in your panel to simply hold the pull tab in place. After adding foam tape to the back of the panel, we can adhere it to our A2 card base of poppin' pink cardstock. This next step is optional, but if you feel like the brads might be visible from the sides and you don't have white brads, you can just paint them with a white sharpie. 
I decided to hide them behind a second layer of wings, which I'm gluing on top of the others, but without adding glue to the brad itself. They also add some nice volume to make the wings stand out from the background. You can also do that by coloring them in bold colors. Mine are really kind of transparent. Now we're ready to add our little fairy and finishing touches. That's all for today. As always, you'll find all of the information regarding the measurements and products that I used in the description box below or on my blog. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hasta la próxima. Bye bye.